The height of a ball thrown vertically upward from a rooftop is modeled by h of t equals to minus 5t square plus 20t plus 50, where h of t is the ball's height above the ground in meters at time t seconds after the throw. Now we need to find three things. Determine the maximum height of the ball. How long does it take for the ball to reach the maximum height? And part C is how high is the roof top? Now, let me write down the equation once again and then we'll analyze this situation. So, equation given to us is h of t equals to minus 5t square plus 20t plus 50, right? Part A is determine the maximum height of the ball. Now, in one of the videos, we have discussed four methods to find the maximum height. One of them is completing the squares. So you can complete the squares and get maximum height. And you'll also get the answer for part B, which is how long does it take for the ball to reach the maximum height? So both the answers you can get by completing the squares. Now, you could also do partial factoring. That means factor these two out and then get first how long does the ball take to reach the maximum height and then plug in that time and get the maximum height. The third way to do it is using the quadratic formula for example minus b by 2a. Do you remember that part? Minus b by 2a will directly give you the value of t at on which we have axis of symmetry. Once you know that value of t then you can plug it in and get your answer. So that is the third way. Fourth way is to factor the equation, get two factors. Midway between them is axis of symmetry. So basically it boils down to get axis of symmetry and then we get part B answer. And from that we can get A. So we have discussed how to get A and B. How about C? How high is the rooftop? Now since the question says the height of the ball thrown vertically upward from the roof is given like this, where h of t is the ball's height above the ground meters per meters at t equals to t seconds after the throw. That means when t equals to zero, where is the ball? Ball is on the rooftop. So part c is that simple. So let's start with part c and move upwards. So for part c, I have to put t equals to zero and find height. So h of zero gives me rooftop, which is zero plus zero plus fifty. Right? If I plug in 0 here, I get 0. So basically, I get 50 meters. And therefore, the height of the rooftop is indeed 50 meters. Right? So that is my first answer. Second answer is, we could use minus b by 2a. I'll show you all. So if I do at t equals to minus b by 2a. What I mean by minus b by 2a is, b is the coefficient of t, which is minus of 20. 20 is divided by... 2 times a is minus 5, minus 5. And what do I get? I get minus 20 divided by minus 10, and my answer is 2. So for part b, my answer is t equals to 2. Let me do the same thing using partial factoring and show you it works. If I have to partial factor it, then I can write this equation as minus 5, t is common, and I get t minus if I take 5 here, I get 4 inside plus 50. Now I got zeros at t equals to 0 and t equals to 4, right? t equals to 4. To get a midway, we have to add them, divide by 2. So that is the time t for axis of symmetry. And that is 4 divided by 2 equals to 2. So we get the same answer. Do you see? How long does it take for the ball to reach the maximum height? It takes two seconds for the ball to reach the maximum height, right? You can try to do completing the squares, you'll get the same answer. Two, try it out. And then see, there are three, four methods. This is very fast, correct? Now, determine the maximum height. That means height at t equals to two. So just calculate what is h of two equals to. So when you plug in two, what do you get? Minus five times two square plus 20 times t plus 50, right? You can use your calculator, do the calculations. Or we have minus 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 5 is 20, minus 20, plus 2 times 20 is 40, 
plus 50, right? So when you add them, you get 20 plus 50 as 70 as your answer. So we can get maximum height is when time is 2 seconds and we get that equals to 90 minus 20, 70 meters, right? So that is how these kinds of questions can be solved. I have explained to you at length so that you understand if this kind of question is given to you, how to go about, right? Many times we ask this question in multiple choice type questions. In that, this is the best way to get the answer, right? Now, if it is that using completing the squares you have to give the answer, then of course you cannot avoid. You have to do completing the squares and then do it. But that takes most of the time. Keep these things in mind when you answer such questions in test papers. I hope you appreciate it. Thank you and all the best.